30 inch corn versus 60 inch corn. Uh, the initial part of that was uh, a friend of mine was working on it, trying to, to uh, learn how we might have some opportunities for some different covers and getting some different cover crop species living. He concentrated on trying to find out what was the optimum row spacing without giving up too much yield. And in his studies, he learned that uh, if you had a 60 inch row, his data would su suggest you got just as much yield out of that 60 inch row as you would a 30 inch row, but you've got double of the population in that row. So you got the same seed drop per acre, whether it's 60 inches or whether it's 30 inches. As far as the objective of the trial, the farmers were interested in widening the corn row to 60 inches wide and seeing if they could reap more growth from a cover crop that they interseeded between those corn rows and see if they could achieve corn yields similar to what they would see in a conventional 30 inch wide row. So this trial was conducted at four locations. One was by Jack Boyer near Rhinebeck. One was by Fred Abels near Holland. One was by Chris Teachout in Shenandoah. And one was conducted by Brian and Heather Kessel along with Jim Johnson near Lamoni. Somebody uh, made the remark that would really open up for fall grazing. And that's something I struggle with. Uh, we've got 65 cows and calves and three bulls right now. So that takes a lot of forage. But that's how come I decided to try the 60 inch rows. You know, if I could knock on wood, plant 10 acres or 20 acres, harvest it, and the cows had it for grazing, that would add uh, roughly two weeks from a week to two weeks to their um, being out of my hair. And that would be huge. So I'm, I'm taking it further in trying to learn, okay, now that we've got that and supposedly there's no yield loss from corn on the corn side, what species can we get to survive in there? This trial had not been done in Iowa before, at least in a rigorous scientific setting. Uh, there had been some demonstration plots conducted and there had also been some trials done by the University of Missouri uh, 10 or 12 years ago. The strips started by plugging seed tubes on my cyclo planter, every other one. So I ended up with uh, 60 inch rows. And this variety that's planted here is the same variety as in the rest of the field. Um, these strips are 400 feet long and the other there's also the same number of strips that's conventional 30 inch rows and they're 400 feet long also in this field. So we'll take harvest uh, data, yield check both of them. So that's kind of how I decided to try it. I, you know, you don't know till you try. Results of the trial were mixed in terms of corn yields at two locations. The farmers saw equal yields between the two corn row spacings, be it 60 inch wide rows or 30 inch wide rows. But at Fred Abel's and Chris Teachout's, they saw yield declines where they widened the corn row to 60 inches wide compared to where they planted it in the conventional 30 inch wide rows. Well, the results tell us is that uh, this is a system that still needs refining. Um, before it is adopted on a, a wider scale and the farmers are the first ones that will tell you that. Um, they still find it an intriguing practice. Um, most of them were able to see more cover crop grown underneath the corn that was in the 60 inch wide rows. So that is appealing, uh, especially to farmers that have livestock to graze that in the fall. Um, but they will all uh, note that weed control can be a challenge and that may have been the uh, cause for some of the lower occurring yields in the 60 inch or the wide row corn at some of those sites.